Tokyo. It was a moment of sheer joy for Japan. A moment that's long past in a now jaded nation. Tokyo is hosting the 2020 Summer Olympics in the summer of 2021, even if it does not want to. These Olympic Games will be like none other. No foreign visitors coming to show their national pride and spend money on hotels and tickets. And no packed stadiums. There won't be any crowds at all. Not even Japanese citizens, with no spectators allowed inside venues to cheer on athletes. Those athletes will compete, go back to their rooms, and then leave the country. All of this brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic that's still a concern here. It will be a shadow of what the Olympics could be. So why not cancel the games once and for all? The International Olympic Committee is perfectly happy to have a made-for-TV Olympics in Tokyo, so long as that means that the broadcaster revenues and the corporate revenues will roll into their accounts. That'd be nine out of every $10. The games were already pushed back a year, still keeping the Tokyo 2020 branding. A cancellation would mean busted contracts and billions of dollars lost. The International Olympic Committee is adamant the games will go on even if Tokyo is in a state of emergency because of the virus, which it now is. I can say it's now clearer than ever that these games will be so safe for everyone participating and importantly, safe for the people of Japan. Jules Boykoff of Pacific University has written four books about the politics of the games. He says these Olympics will lack the spirit, the vitality everyone knows. There's just kind of no getting around that unless you decided that for the sake of public health, it just wasn't worth going forward with this bloodless, joyless, transactional type of situation. And for the sake of global public health, you decided to shut it down. The games are happening even as Japan struggles with the virus. It's way behind other big nations in vaccinating its own people. At the start of the games, only about a quarter of the population has gotten all of their shots. A chorus of doctors, company executives, and the Japanese people have come out against the games. Even the Japanese emperor is worried. Some opinion polls put opposition at 80 percent, though support may now be building. The Japanese bureaucracy is now moving, with the pace of shots picking up. But it's come too late to really have a proper full Olympics with spectators enjoying themselves and people from abroad and so on and so forth. Simon Denyer is in Tokyo as the Washington Post bureau chief for Japan and the Koreas. I think there is a sense of, of resignation. The, sh the show must go on, even if it's not a very good show. Japan may spend close to $30 billion on the show, possibly the most expensive Summer Olympics ever. The year-long delay did not help. Money is also going to big-ticket building projects. Eight new venues, including the National Stadium, where the games start and end. Four sports are making their Olympic debut. Karate, sport climbing, surfing, and skateboarding. There will be moments, for sure. Like from Simone Biles, America's most decorated gymnast. These Olympics also come with symbolism, as all games do. Tokyo last hosted the Summer Games in 1964, announcing to the world it had arrived, rebuilt after World War II. These 2020 games, a show of force for Japan, against nearby rival China, which is hosting the Winter Games next year. It wants to prove that it can do this, and it, it doesn't want China to grab all the glory of the sort of post-pandemic Olympics. But the Tokyo Olympics are happening in a pandemic. There are warnings about a lack of hospital space, worries about a new wave of infections from welcoming some 11,000 athletes, plus many more staff, officials, and media from the world over. The U.S. government has been telling its citizens not to travel here. Organizers say most athletes will be vaccinated, but that's not required. The games are lacking much of what makes an Olympics an Olympics. A cast of thousands of local volunteers helping out at every venue and a global spread of visitors, indulging in everything from taking selfies to trading pins. 
you're probably not going to have these rambunctious crowds that are cheering on the athletes. You're not going to have the uh, cultural exchange that you often see in the athletes' village or, or around town. It's the athletes that make the Olympics what the Olympics are. We should always remember that. And the athletes are going to be essentially handcuffed by coronavirus. An Olympics like no other, in a time like no other. Thank you.